Namo Namaha. Welcome again to this course on Introduction to Basic Spoken Sanskrit. We have been looking at the third case or the instrumental case in our previous session. We had looked at some context in which that particular case is used. Today I will do a continuation of that and therefore today's lesson which is lecture number 16 will be on the continuation of the instrumental or the third case. And the objectives are as follows. We will first do a revision of the instrumental case with the definition and the uh, uh, basic context in which it is applied. Following that we will do an understanding or I will uh, help you understand the remaining contexts in which the third case can be used. And finally, I'd like to uh, teach you this adverb which is ataha or therefore and a related conjunction yataha or because. And then I'll do a small conversation with Piyush to show you some daily used words. So moving on to the definition as we'd seen, I'll briefly run over it. The instrumental case or tritya vibhakti or the noun form represents the instrumental form in a sentence. The answer that comes from the question by what is the instrument in the sentence. The instrument is with what the subject or karta is doing something. The instrument is independent of the number and gender of the subject or object. And this as we had seen, so if you have hastaha, hastaha. Hastena khadati. Hastaha, hastena khadati. So when it says that it is independent of the subject, it means purushaha. Hastena khadati. Mahila, hastena khadati. So the masculine and the feminine will uh, not affect the way in which the instrument is uh, is declined or is being turned into the vibhakti form. Now, uh, neither does the number affect because even if it is purushaha hastena khadanti, which means all the men eat with their hand, or mahilaha hastena khadanti, which means the ladies eat with their hand, or mitrani in the neuter case, hastena khadanti, means the friends also eat with their hand and it's still in the singular. So let's do a quick revision of that. So before I move on to showing it to you on the screen, I'll just do a little uh, memory exercise. Hastaha, hastena. Chashakaha, chashakena. Chamasaha, chamasena. Chashakena kim karoti? Chashakena kim kim karoti? What all can you do? Jalam pibati. Katham. Remember the question? Katham jalam pibati. Chashakena jalam pibati uttamam and we saw that the masculine and the neuter are the same forms and so we had kankatam so kesha prasadanam means combing so kankatena kesha prasadanam karoti katham pra kesha prasadanam karoti kankatena pushpam pushpena dantapenakam dantapenakena Pena kam? Pena kena. Pena kena. Kim? Kim? Prakshalayati. What do you clean? Pena kena. Vastram prakshalayati. Pena kena. Shariram prakshalayati. Pena kena. Patram. Vessel prakshalayati. So many things. And each of those things will be in the object case. Alright. Pena kena. Hastaha. Hastam prakshalayati. Got that? And with what? Katham hastam prakshalayati phena kena or phena kena. Lovely. And then we saw the feminine. So the feminine was a. So ma la ma laya alankaram karoti. Ma laya ma la ma laya. Sthalika sthalikaya. Amba ambaya. Ambaya kutra kutra gachati. Where all do you go with your mother? Think about it. Alright. Moving on to the feminine with the E. Duravani, Duravanya afvayati. Calling. Duravanya afvayati. Katham afvayati. Duravanya afvayati. Lekhani, Lekhanya. Not Lekhanyaha. Because Lekhanyaha nama. Chalo, huh? but lekhanya likhati uttamam, katham likhati, lekhanya likhati, 
लेखन्या किम लिखति लेखन्या कथाम लिखति दैट्स अ स्टोरी कथाम लिखति कथा कथाम लिखति गॉट इट कूपी कूप्या पिबति कूप्या किम पिबति कूप्या जलम पिबति कूप्या फल रसम पिबति कथम पिबति कूप्या हां सो कूप्या अलोंग विथ रिमेंबर so the third case with the actions is this one so with huh? moving on so it's we see that it's with the question katham uh, which is normally how or in this case by what or with what so looking quickly at the third case of nouns and pronouns in the masculine feminine and neuter we have purushaha becomes purushena phalam phalena uttamam moving on to feminine with i and e endings महिला महिलया नारी नारिया उत्तम सो कैन वी गो ऑन बिकॉज वीव ऑलरेडी डन दिस बिफोर वी हैव सम मो केसेस टू सी टूडे सो अहम वी आर लुकिंग नाउ एट द थर्ड केस फॉर द फर्स्ट पर्सन सेकेंड पर्सन फर्स्ट इन फॉर्मल एंड देन द फॉर्मल सो अहम इज मया विथ मी मया गति पीयूष मया संस्कृत पठती मया विथ मी देन थया विथ यू हाँ सो थया कि थया गृह गति करेक्ट विद भवान द रिस्पेक्ट फॉर्म इट विल बिकम भवता अहम भवता कार्य कौमी विच मीन्स आई एम वर्किंग विथ यू मैस्क्युल रिस्पेक्ट फॉर्म एंड देन विद लेडी अहम भवत कार्य कौमी अहम भवत्या कार्य कौमी आई एम वर्किंग विथ यू अस्त स्पष्ट अस्ति स्पष्ट इन संस्कृत मीन्स क्लियर स्पष्ट अस्ति किम एंड यू वुड आंसर आम स्पष्ट अस्ति विच मीन्स यस इट इज क्लियर और न स्पष्ट नास्ति विच होपफुली इज नॉट द केस राइट सो मूविंग ऑन we have here so the third person becomes in the masculine and the neuter sah becomes tena tat tena esah etena etat etena kah will become kena and kim again kena the word kena is uh, interesting and an important one because you have an upanishad which is known after it known as the kena upanishad and that upanishad is known as the kena upanishad because it starts with this word and it goes like this kene shitam patati preshitam manaha means who has sent and uh, by by what has the mind uh, been sent forth okay so kene shitam patati preshitam manaha so uh, the more you are familiar with the grammar of sanskrit and also in its applied context you will really start appreciating these lofty texts of the uh, the philosophical texts like the upanishad the gita and many other scientific texts and uh, literary texts as well so moving on with the feminine we have sa becoming taya sa mahila aham taya gachami or aham taya mahilaya gachami next esha e taya and the same sentence you can make and the question is kaya gachati with whom are you going taya gachami or e taya gachami uttamam so now we'll come to today's uh, content and so we have the fourth grammatical rule uh, and that rule says that the word expressing the nature or characteristics of someone or something will be in the instrumental case so if you're saying by nature a person is like that that by nature word will be in the third case so you have balakah prakritya or swabhavena chapalah balakah prakritya or sorry the action is not this one the action is this one prakritya or swabhavena chapalah and the verb is asti which need not be said the next one let's have a look balika akritya sundari she is by nature by look by all of that sundari she is beautiful balika akritya sundari 
and another sentence mama amba swabhavena madhura asti okay now we can see that on the screen and you'll see there just the the slide itself so mama amba swabhavena madhura asti so my question to you bhavata amba swabhavena katham asti how is your mother or bhavatyah amba so try and make a sentence with using this or maybe you want to just talk of your nature and you would say aham swabhavena uh, uh, bahu parishrami asti or parishrami or uh, i am very hard working or aham swabhavena quiet what is the word for quiet shantaha and if it's a lady shanta asmi so this is another thing that we will look at a little bit in the course of this lesson is the fact that adjectives also have an accord with the word they are describing so if the word is in the it will take on the case as well as the gender and number of the word and that's how we know that this particular adjective accompanies this particular word so like we have here we have here that balakah uh, chapallah so meaning naughty but because it is a masculine it will be balakah chapallah had it been feminine it would be balika chapala got it and similarly you see with the case of mamma amba it is madhura if it was mamma janakah it would be madhurah uttamam and if you want to say uh, what else is it mamma mitram which is the neuter word then you would say madhuram uttamam so we'll just do a little exercise for that so we have tat vahanam katham chalati this is another place where in under that same definition the we have the use of the third case so tat vahanam or yanam they are synonyms almost katham chalati and the answer is vegah but we need to put the third case there so it would be vegena chalati katham chalati vegena chalati or the feminine which is twara would become twaraya chalati katham chalati twaraya chalati so bhavan aur bhavati vegena kim kim karoti vegena vadati kim do you speak fast or mandam vadati ha huh? so vegena or twaraya always in a hurry theek hai so the next one let's see that so sa yuvati katham tishthati how does she stay tishthati is stay but as well as uh, stand ha huh? but in this case it is how does she stay in general and then the answer to that is sukham tishthati but if you apply the third case it would be sukhena tishthati uttamam say that sukhena tishthati anandah anandena tishthati dukkhah dukhena tishthati but ideally as a sentence we should say dukhena na tishthati all right or another important word santoshah satisfaction will become santoshe santoshena tishthati uttamam move on moving on another case here is sa na or saha namna vinayah means by name he is vinayah saha namna vinayah and you can apply that in different contexts another application in the same in terms of your nature uh, or your background your automatic background could be the particular jati you belong to and that would be aham jatya kshatriya a man a lady would say aham jatya kshatriya and you can apply it to any other jati that we have uh, as a social uh, division so just one quick note here i am often asked in the when i meet friends when they talk about the indian tradition they talk about the caste system and uh, i will take this opportunity to just bring in a certain clarification around this term so in the indian context we have two words that are important to understand there is the notion of jati means the place where you are born or the family in which you are born and that family might have its different occupations etc and the other important idea is of the varna and the varna 
was based on one's temperament and one's activity. So in the Gita they talk of the Guna Karma Vibhaga Shaha. So Guna means your qualities and Karma meant your actions and that determined which Varna you belong to. And where do we find the origins of this concept of the Varna? The, this idea finds its roots in the Rig Veda in the 1090th hymn. Where, known as the Purusha Sukta and in the Purusha Sukta there is a description of the supreme being uh, known as the Purusha which has nothing to do with the gender of that being but this Purusha's head became the Brahmana, the hands became the arms became the Kshatriya or the warrior, uh, the procreatory part became the Vaishya or the creator and the artisans and the generator of things and the feet became the shudra or the servitor. Now it is important to understand that all this formed part of one system and there was no hierarchy in it. Each was required to ensure the complete functioning of the supreme being and its creation. And therefore uh, this idea was prevalent in our society uh, we come to know of that through certain stories. Like there is a story in the Chandogya Upanishad about Satyakama Jabala. And the story is, goes thus, that this little boy goes to the ashrama of Hari Dhrumata Gautama, who was the sage, and tells him that I would love to study in your place. So the guru tells him, you know, I need to know what your lineage is. Who are your parents? So the boy comes back and asks his mother, who is my father? And the mother says, my son, honestly, I have worked in so many houses, I won't be able to tell you who your father is. But you can tell him that you are the son of Jabala. Jabala. So then the boy comes back and tells the guru that he didn't know who his father was, but he would call himself Satyakama Jabala. And then the guru immediately accepts him into the, his institution and to the utmost surprise of everyone else. And then he says that uh, one who has the courage to speak the truth, it has all the qualities of a Brahmana. And so what I will try and do is to tell you this story in Sanskrit and see how much you can understand of it. So, ekaha balakaha asti tasya nama satyakamaha ekam dinam saha acharya haridrumata gautama sya samipam gachati. So, Acharya Sya Samipam Gachati Prichati He Acharya Aham Bhavata Saha with you Patitum Ichami or Pathami Kim Patitum is a form that we will encounter later on. It is the infinitive form. So, Patitum to study. So, Aham Bhavata Saha Pathami Kim Acharya Vadati He Putra Bhavataha Janakasya Nama Kim Balakaha Vadati Aham Na Janami Aham Mama Ambam Prichami Saha Griham Gachati Ambam Prichati He asks his mother He Ambe Mama Janakasya Nama Kim Mata Vadati or Amba Vadati Aham Na Janami Aham Bahushu Griheshu Karyam Kritavati. So I worked in many houses. Aham na janami bhavataha janakaha kaha iti. So I don't know who your father was. The boy comes back and tells him that uh, tells the guru saha ashramam agachati acharyam vadati. He acharya mama amba uktavati. She said. Sa mama janakasya nama na janati. Kintu, but tasya ha nama jabala asti. Ataha mama nama satya kama jabala iti. So her name was jabala, and therefore I call myself satya kama jabala. Guruhu shishyam svikaroti. Saha vadati. Bhavan. Satyam vadati ataha bhavataha brahmana swabhavaha asti. So he says you have the courage to speak the truth and therefore you have the nature of the brahmana. Astu. So the, there were stories like that that uh, gave us insights into the fact that this the, the difference of jati and varna 
existed in our society at some time. So no matter the, whether you are born in a lower jati, but if one had a certain temperament like being a warrior, one could have uh, functioned in that particular manner. And so uh, this is a huge discussion why due to d d various socio-historic conditions there were distortions within the system but we will keep that for another time and for now uh, what we will do is that uh, we will just look uh, go on with our lesson. In the lesson we next have that Kripaya Ekena Kramena Agachatu. Kramaha means order and Ekena means by one or with one order agachantu kripaya ekena kramena agachantu got that moving on mrigaha swechaya brahmanti ichha is your will sva ichha put it together becomes swechha by uh, one's will and then by one's will swechaya so mrigaha or animals, deer, whatever, Swechaya Brahmanti, the deer are moving around on their own wish. So let us go on to the next rule. Here we see that if words like Purvaha, elder, which means elder, or Avaraha, which means younger, or Paraha, which also means younger, are uh, used to express a comparison in time, then the word expressing the sense of time will be in the instrumental case of the Tritya Vibhakti. So, what do we mean by that? So, when we say Mamma Sahodaraha Mat Varsha Trayena Purvaha means my brother is elder to me by three years. Okay. Now, the elder could have also been put in green. So, if you are taking notes on this, see that you put it also in that color and that way you can remember the thing okay because we have that color code with the next sentence so here we say mama sahodaraha mat varshatrayena purvaha by three years he is ahead of me so if you want to say that uh, my uh, my sister is uh, elder to me or let's say you just stick to my brother we'll just make some sentences so mama sahodaraha mat means from me one year would be ekena varshena or eka varshena purvaha. Two years, so it can be complicated, but to simplify your life, you could just say varsha dvayena. Three years, varsha trayena. Four years, varsha chatushtayena. All right, if you do it this way, it simplifies the way in which these four numbers are utilized. Moving on to the next one, we have sa twat ekamasena avara or para means afterwards. So she is younger to you by a month. Try that again. Sa twat ekamasena avara or para. Now, what I'd like you to do is that if you have siblings in your family, Maybe you can just put a pause here and just see if you can construct a sentence or two using uh, the third case with either Purva or Avara or Para. Alright? So, do that lesson and then we can move on together. So, here we have the word, uh, the next rule which is the, uh, which says that if any word expressing lameness in any organ or body part is used, then the word representing the organ or body part will be in the instrumental case. Now, I must, I must acknowledge at this stage that uh, all these different cases or these different contexts that I am telling you are a little bit of the exceptions and a little more detailed. It's not uh, exactly the basic spoken Sanskrit, but I wanted to share these with you because uh, as you probably will keep pursuing this language further, you will be able to fall back on these lessons and uh, you will have the material with you and the more you practice it, the more you will see that it will become familiar and you will also start identifying these usages in texts. So while it is basic spoken Sanskrit and you can say many things with what is being taught to you, but there is also a little bit of going in depth with some of these rules. So, if you are not getting them first hand, don't worry, it is just a deeper specification. So, here we have Saha netrena 
kanaha means he is uh, blind with an eye nitrena with one eye or akshna implying eyes kanaha means he is blind all right so we have another word there lochana bhyam lochana is also another word for eyes and uh, lochana bhyam is the dual case so this is the first time we are encountering the dual case but i will not lay emphasis on this now we will see all the forms right at the end just for your general knowledge but this was an interesting sentence that was made here so i thought i'll share it with you you can either say lochana bhyam which means eye and eye with both eyes or you can club the number 2 together and say lochana dvayena and then the sentence goes vihina darpanaha kim karishyati so lochana dvayena vihina darpanena kim karishyati it's a question so if you take if you just look at the screen now you can see the transliteration and this literally means that one who is without two eyes vihinasya means without two eyes darpanaha kim karishyati what can a mirror do for somebody who doesn't have the eyes just one way of uh, to present this particular thing the next one i mean i'll just give you an example here is uh, karnaha badhiraha how would you say that karnaha badhiraha means deaf hard of hard of hearing so try making that sentence karnena badhiraha uttamam let's go on so the next rule says that the word expressing any mark of identification of a person will be in the instrumental case again this is a detail so i'll just quickly run through it so it says jata bhihi tapasah asti so jata is singular jata bhihi with many many matted locks that person is a sage or a sadhu next upavitena upavitena brahmanaha so we have the uh, the different communities that would be initiated with the sacred thread so this is just a sentence that is saying that one with that sacred thread or upavitaha is a brahmanaha so upavitena brahmanaha uh, again there are so there are social things associated with this idea but that is not will not get into that now uh, yet the whole concept behind upa upavitaha is very interesting because what it really did was to initiate the individual into the whole path of what is the duty and that was something that they carried with them as a symbol and reminder of the duties they had towards themselves towards society towards all their environment etc so moving on we have uh, the next rule which says that the word expressing the cause of something will be in the instrumental case so for example mouth is drying why is the mouth drying because of the heat the word for heat is atapaha and therefore that will become atapena mukham shushkam bhavati shushkam is dry so mukham katham or kimartham why shushkam bhavati mukham atapena shushkam bhavati let's move on so we have the the word here bhagna hridaya bhagna means broken and hridaya means heart so with a broken heart is bhagna hridaya how did he get bhagna hridaya dukhena with sorrow saha bhagna hridaya dukhena saha bhagna hridaya next one i want you to try doing that the sentence says phalam praptam you get the fruit when do you get the fruit parishramaha so parishramaha means with effort with effort so i will keep it in the singular here ha huh? so with effort would be parishramaha and that will become parishramena parishramena this action parishramena phalam praptam or if you want to see it with the plural Uh, it will become parishramai huh? that's the plural for the third case in the masculine parishramai phalam 
scrapped them with many kinds of efforts he was successful to get the fruit the ninth rule says that if words like alam enough kim uh, what in, what need or prayojanam which means need are used to express a sense of need or necessity then the word expressing representing the thing which is needed will be in the instrumental case so for example uh, i need food huh? or i need to study would be mama pathena prayojanam so i want you to do it with bhojanam so pathena means with study i'd like you to do it with bhojanam it will be mama bhojanena prayojanam uttamam moving on we'll use it with kim kalahena kim kalaha means quarrel kalahena kim what of what need for quarreling the next one i'd like you to do it what need of sorrow or what need of sorrow will become dukhena kim moving on vivadena alam alam is enough so enough of a uh, quarrel again or fighting so vivadena alam disputing vivada is also a uh, verbal dispute vivadena alam or with bad behavior durvyavaharena alam i'd like you to try that adharmaha will become adharmena alam so enough of unrighteous or undutiful behavior unlawful behavior so in the next rule we see that if words like hina shunya una are used then uh, that mean a lack of something then the words governed by these will be in the instrumental case so for example if somebody has less money huh, or dhanam what would it become dhanena unaha or dhanena shunya or dhanena hinaha asti asti is optional so if you just said that saha dhanena hinaha means he is lacking wealth or he has less of wealth similarly if now you would like to say someone has less of knowledge what would it be jnanam is the word and it will be jnanena hinaha shunya means devoid completely shunya okay una means less una and hina mean more or less the same thing shunya means completely devoid of that all right so going on to the next one it says that if a sentence means achievement of some result after some time then the word expressing the time will be in the instrumental case for example karyalaya and then you have the word with the green in it varshena nirmitaha and then at the end abhavat so office karyalaya varshena in a year or with one year nirmitaha constructed abhavat got constructed so if you want to say um, another word vidyalaya it will be vidyalaya varshena nirmitaha abhavat and because we've seen that the adjectives go along with the nouns you have pathashala varshena nirmita abhavat and the last one mandiram varshena nirmitam abhavat uttamam moving to the next sentence we have masa trayena so all of you now in just 3 months july september october uttamam in just 3 months you would have learned sanskrit you would have studied sanskrit so we could say or i could say that bhavantaha masa trayena sanskritam pathitavantaha so bhavantaha masa trayena sanskritam pathitavantaha for the men and for the ladies bhavatyah masa trayena sanskritam pathitavatyah uttamam got that let's go on so the next rule says that uh, the word expressing the value or cost of something will be in the instrumental case so if you go to a shop and you buy something for let's say 5 rupees or the 5 coins mudra was the older coins so you say aham pancha mudra bhihi pustakam kritavan a man is saying it aham pancha mudra bhihi pustakam kritavan and we've also looked at the plural of the instrument for rupyakam will become rupyakai with rupees okay so aham pancha rupyakai pustakam 
Kritavan or Kritavati. The feminine, uh, now let's look at the next sentence and I would like you to do it this time. So, Sa Dasharupya Kam Lekhanim Kritavati. How would you change that? Sa Dasharupya Kai Lekhanim Kritavati Uttamam. Now let's move on to the next one. It says that the word expressing the person to whom something is given to perform some immoral or indecent act will be in the instrumental case and not in the dative case. Now this is really a specification. So I'll just present it to you because then you will have an overall, a very comprehensive understanding of how this case gets used. So here it says, Kamukaha dasya dhanam sanyachate. So we will look at this in the next classes is that when you have the concept of give to someone, the person who is getting it will be in the dative or the fourth case, which we have not yet studied. So here they are just saying that when that individual who is receiving is also party to an act which was immoral perhaps or indecent, then it becomes the third case. I think it's an interesting logic there because it means that that person is along with, it's not a mere receiver but has also participated in that particular act and therefore uh, the act or whatever that uh, the case that they're talking about. So here you have the lustful person or kamukaha dasya to the maid dhanam sanyachate. All right. The next one says, and this is the last rule that we have here. It says that the word expressing the path that is followed will be in the instrumental case. So the word for path is margaha and therefore it would become in the third case margena. Margaha margena or rather margaha margena. I am doing this action but this action really goes with the sixth case. Margena must be accompanied with this one. So we have Mama Janake, Mama Janakaha Prati Dinam Etena Margena Gachati. He goes along this particular road only. Mama Janakaha Prati Dinam Etena Margena Gachati. Maybe you would like to try making a sentence with Aham Prati Dinam Kena Margena Gachami, Tena Margena Gachami or anything. But try making a sentence or two, put a pause. So after every lesson I do, just put a pause and try and apply it. Because this entire process of learning involves uh, a new information, a new acquisition, then you have practice and then you have to apply it. Only if you follow these three steps will you really get a good grasp of what is being taught to you. Next, and I will, uh, we are sort of rounding up today's session. <clears throat> so we have this adverbs which is ataha, which means therefore, and the conjunction yataha, meaning because. So it is like, bhuksha asti, I am hungry, bhojanam karomi. Bhuksha asti, ataha, bhojanam karomi. Therefore, bhojanam karomi. And then, kimartham bhojanam karoti. Why bhojanam karoti? And the answer is yataha bubhuksha asti. So bhojanam karomi yataha bubhuksha asti. So ataha is therefore yataha is because huh? in both directions. So we look at that. We have bubhuksha asti and I have given you the directions of how the two sentences connect. So ataha bhojanam karomi and bhojanam karomi yataha. Bubhuksha asti. Got it? So we'll do a little exercise there. Pipasa asti jalam pibami. Make the sentence. Pipasa asti ataha jalam pibami. Jalam pibami yataha pipasa asti. Uttamam. Next one. Pariksha asti chhatraha samyak pathanti. Samyak means very well. Pariksha asti. Ataha chhatraha samyak pathanti, chhatraha samyak pathanti, yataha pariksha asti. Uttamam. Next one. Karyalayasya samayaha abhavat. Karyalaya is office. So karyalayasya samayaha means time of the office. Abhavat, it's time for the office. To, it's time to go to the office. Next sentence. Shigram kachamaha vayam. Shigram 
गच्छामः सो अप टू यू नाउ कार्यालयस्य समयः अभवत् अतः शीघ्रं गच्छामः शीघ्रं गच्छामः यतः कार्यालयस्य समयः अभवत् उत्तमं सो मूविंग ऑन आई जस्ट लाइक टू डू अ स्मॉल डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ अ पर्टिक्युलर डायलॉग एंड दीज आर सम डेली यूज वर्ड्स फॉर डेली यूज दैट आर इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट यू वुड नीड टू अप्लाई इन योर डेली कॉन्टेक्स्ट सो आई हैव पीयूश ओवर एंड वी आई डू अ डेमॉन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ दिस पर्टिक्युलर दिस सेट्स ऑफ वर्ड्स सो नमस्ते स्वागत आगछत बहि बहु उष्ण अस्त कि बहि इज आउटसाइड उष्ण इज हॉट बहि बहु उष्ण अस्त कि बहि उष्ण अस्त उत्तम आतपेन मुखम शुष्क अभवत् कि आतपेन मम मुखम भवती शुष्क अस्त जल आवश्यक किम आम किंचित आवश्यक स्वीकरोतु जलम स्वीकरोतु शीतलम जलम <laughs> उत्तम इतोपि जलम आवश्यक किम पर्याप्त मस्त इतोपि किंचित स्वीकरोतु किंचित ददा इतोपि आवश्यक न न न पर्याप्त पर्याप्त अस्त so here we saw these few words that we so when he came in as a swagatam and then uh, we used that atapena mukham shushkam which we had seen today and then the questions were avashyakam kim jalam avashyakam kim which means do you want and he said am kinchit avashyakam and i gave him the water then i said itopi itopi means some more itopi avashyakam kim I said am avashyakam He first was not so keen, and then I said, "No, take some more." So, itopi swikarotu, and then after that, he says, "I said itopi avashyakam." He said, "Mastu ina mastu means I don't want pariyaptam enough, huh? Pariyaptam enough." Astu. So, looking at the screen, so dhanya vada, piyusha, tista. We have the words here, which are kim avashyakam. What do you want? And itopi some more, mastu don't want, and pariyaptam enough. and as usual we'll come to the end of this session with a subhashitam applying what we had seen today this one says udyame nahi siddhyanti udyama is efforts hi siddhyanti are accomplished what are accomplished with efforts karyani works na manorathai not with mere dreaming and your mere wishes how nahi suptasya singhasya so not in a sleeping lions mukham also pravishanti mukhe mrigaha pravishanti means enters kutra mukhe mrigaha the deer okay so this particular verse is saying by effort alone works are accomplished not with day dreams the deer do not enter the mouth of a sleeping lion okay very important verse to digest and apply in one's life i'll chant it once or i'll recite it once you repeat after me then we'll do it together udyame nahi siddhyanti karyani na manorathai nahi suptasya singhasya I would really suggest that you start learning all these subhashitas because they become your uh, your own prized uh, wisdom, your tips of wisdom. Just one uh, observation: manorathai is in the plural, so udyamena is single. Manorathai is the instrumental plural case. So how could you remember in case you had forgotten what it was? Remember this verse, and it will help you recollect the form. So we come to the close of our uh, uh, session with a quote. Uh, it's a powerful quote by Professor Macdonald, who was an Indologist, a great Sanskritist, who 
who had studied the Vedas and had, has written quite a lot on Vedic grammar. So he has this to say about Sanskrit literature. He says that the intellectual debt of Europe to Sanskrit literature has been undeniably great. It may perhaps become greater still in the years that are to come. We Europeans are still behind in making even our alphabet a perfect one. So, uh, a lot that is there to learn and a lot that is to delve into our own tradition, into the richness of this language and this culture. Enjoy the journey and Shubham Bhuyat Te Sada is another way of saying may well, well-being be yours always. Shubham Bhuyat is another form to say may well-being be. Te Sada, yours always. So Shubham Bhuyat Te Sada and finally Dhanyavadaha.